Hi, my name is Shubhashish Chatterjee from the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. And on behalf of my co-presenter, Frank Bakowitz from Detroit and the STS Workforce on Critical Care, today we'll be discussing optimizing medical therapy postoperatively after coronary artery bypass grafting. Now, why does postoperative care matter after cabbage? So it's important to recognize that even after cabbage, patients are still vulnerable to major adverse coronary events. Indeed, the quality metrics that the STS uh, looks at is strictly scrutinized and adherence to post-discharge compliance of these medications is important. And finally, most importantly, the late survival of our patients is clearly better as this document by Jeff Jacobs clearly outlines. Now, this slide is critically important. And this is a study looking at five major randomized trials comparing PCI to cabbage. And what you can see here is that as there is less compliance with goal-directed medical therapy in the coronary artery bypass grafting cohorts, the benefit of cabbage largely disappears. You can see this with both stroke, MI, and death, as well as mortality as a whole. So the better patients comply with their post-discharge guideline-driven medications, the better their survival. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the recommendations that are done. We'll talk a little bit about where there's a little bit of controversy and what the guidelines tell us to do. So no part of post-operative management is uh, as important as sometimes as pre-operative management, especially when it comes to antiplatelet therapy. This list here coming from the most recent ACC AHA guidelines indicates when to stop various antiplatelet medications before proceeding to coronary surgery. So here in urgent cases, whether it's clopidogrel or prasugrel, it's a class 1B recommendation to try to wait at least 24 hours before, uh, before uh, uh, proceeding with surgery. You can see here the GP2B inhibitors, eptofibotide and tyrofaban should wait at least four hours, and abcixumab, you should wait at least 12 hours. When it comes to elective coronary bypass surgery, ideally with clopidogrel, you should wait at least five days although there is some recent data that shows that with platelet function tests, you might be able to get away with 72 hours, but five days for clopidogrel and seven days for prasugrel and ticagrelor is a two-way recommendation of when to stop. Now, what about antiplatelet therapy after surgery? So aspirin as a whole, preoperatively, we tend to continue. Patients who are on aspirin are largely, it's a class one recommendation to continue. This is actually interesting. This is a large uh, meta-analysis of 14 randomized trials and almost 4,500 patients that compared patients who had aspirin before compared to uh, whether they stopped it or didn't stop it. Interestingly, they found no difference in mortality, myocardial infarction, or reoperation for bleeding. However, in those patients who were continued with aspirin, there was a slightly higher rate of chest tube drainage and trans transfusions. But this is to, uh, still a class one recommendation. Indeed, after coronary surgery, it's recommended that aspirin be started within six hours postoperatively. And finally, in the 2015 recommendations, they were very selective about who to place on dual antiplatelet therapy. So for example, all patients with off-pump cabbage should get it. Patients who had DAPT for PCI then went on to cabbage, or patients who had acute ACS should also get uh, DAPT for one year. And these were all class one recommendations. Interestingly, there's a significant meta-analysis looking at 20 trials at 4,800 patients. And what they found here was that there, were, there was, however, a benefit in aspirin plus either clopidogrel or ticagrelor for uh, survival outcomes. So here, for example, you could see that there was less saphenous vein graft failure in the aspirin and ticagrelor group and in the aspirin and clopidogrel group. The number needed to treat was 10 in the ticagrelor group and 19 in the clopidogrel group. And notably, you'll see there wasn't a difference in major bleeding. So this data suggests that perhaps vein graft uh, patency is enhanced with dual antiplatelet therapy in all comers. As a result, in the most recent 2022 update, 
the um, uh, guidelines indicate that DAPT is recommended in selected patients for up to one year. However, it is only a 2B recommendation, so still a very low uh, level of uh, recommendation. Now, with respect to statin therapy, so statin, uh, class one all the way around, strong recommendation to continue uh, statins both uh, preoperatively and to aim for high dose intensity uh, statin therapy, aiming for a 30% drop in LDL patient, uh, in LDL in patients under the age of 75. What is notable is that in studies, it's only about 30 to 35% of patients are found one year after cabbage to be meeting, uh, meeting their lipid target. So it's really important to emphasize to patients uh, adherence to their statin recommendations. With respect to beta blockers, so preoperative beta blockers um, is a class one recommendations. And it's interesting, it's not so much for survival benefit, but mainly for a reduction in postoperative atrial fibrillation. Postoperative beta blocker therapy is largely recommended across the board, especially in patients with a history of MI, um, LV dysfunction, and in general, basically all cabbage patients should be discharged on beta blockers. Now, looking at the European guidelines, the European guidelines largely overlap the, uh, the American guidelines. It is interesting, however, to highlight one area, which is with respect to ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, where the Europeans indicate a strong recommendation to stop those medications before surgery. In the American guidelines, what you see here is that you really see that um, it's a 1A recommend, it's uh, not so much a discontinuation, it is a 1A recommendation to um, initiate ACE inhibitors or ARBs in patients who have low EF or patients who are hypertensive or on, uh, have diabetes or chronic kidney disease. And then in the bottom, you see here that patients, uh, uh, some patients who would be recommended would be a 2A. In the right-hand side, this is looking at a dilemma that happens very often, which is should patients who are on angiotensin receptor blockers or ACE inhibitors have their medication stopped preoperatively prior to cabbage to try to reduce the risk of vasoplegic shock? This is a randomized trial from a Canadian group which did just that. They randomized 120 odd patients to stopping the ACE inhibitor or not stopping that. And you can see here, regardless of what they did, the difference really was no different. The, whether it was on postoperative vasoactive medications or the development of vasoplegic shock, shock, discontinuation did not seem to make a difference. So this data, these randomized data seems to suggest it probably does not make a difference in this low risk group of patients. You can make the case that in higher risk patients with renal dysfunction or where it's uh, more significant transfusions are expected, uh, that might be different. Lastly, what about smoking cessation? This is a, a low, some low hanging fruit. It's something that we don't tend to emphasize quite as often, but clearly class one recommendations to be able to not only encourage patients to discontinue, but to actually help them with nicotine replacement adjuncts, uh, a number of which are now commercially available. And this is something that patients can really benefit from. So largely the main message to this is that the optimizing medical therapy postoperatively is really important. It's important for patient long-term survival. It's be incumbent on us as clinicians to be able to educate our patients, uh, to be able to adhere to these guideline-driven recommendations, and to also look further at more uh, investigations into, um, into these different strategies to prolong survival. On behalf of Dr. Frank Bakowitz, uh, this is, uh, and myself uh, and the Workforce on Critical Care from the STS, we thank you for your attention.